Early bird price hikes and allocations on today's Fednababble. This is Fednababble, where Kevin and Cassie make federal retirement benefits understandable for humans like you. These two don't hold back as they answer questions from the FedPilot workshops and webinars or from questions submitted by you at fednababble.com. Welcome, everyone. It's good to have you back once again. Let's hit this right off the bat. Cassie, This, <laughs> I was thinking about this question earlier, and, and I've got some answers to this, but uh, do you recommend taking Social Security early? I don't recommend anything because I'm not a financial <laughs> advisor. That's about it. <laughs> We're not going to give don't advice. Me. We're just going to tell <laughs> you how right. it works, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's right. And so it depends. There's several factors that I think people need to take into consideration because this yeah. answer can vary for everybody. Um. Right, the per the guy who has cancer um, at retirement at sixty two, or finds out that he has cancer shortly after retirement, is going to want to take that Social Security earlier than somebody who, you know, hey, I'm going to live a long time. I'm still working at seventy, and right. I'm not going to take it until my, you know, actual um, uh, later retire uh, later age at 70 which is the highest age that you can collect social security so i think it really it depends um on you know not just health but what does your financial situation look like um where are the different buckets of money that you have coming in uh do you have to draw social security early just because you've got to make that income need yeah I don't know. It's that's all the over. best I got. Yeah, you know, I was gonna answer. I was gonna answer. Do, oh, so do you recommend taking Social Security early? I was gonna say no. Do I recommend it taking late? No. Do I recommend it taking it at FRA? No, I don't. I, I mean, oh my goodness. One of the one of the advisors in a trusted network I was talking to recently, and he said there are five hundred over five hundred and fifty different strategies for Social Security. Wow. <laughs> And, and, That's and, insane. And it's and it's everyone's job to figure out which is right for them out of the 550. And so you're right. It is all. I mean, it's kind of like I was just thinking about it. Someone saying, "Okay, is our solar system on the right side or the left side of the of of our galaxy?" That's a really good question. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I don't which know. It depends on which perception you're at or, you know, angle yeah. and, and what you see that and what you what you're looking at, which side you're on. Right. It's just like, well, what side is your driveway on? Well, what side of the road are you going to be coming down? Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, right. It's not quite that simple for Social Security, but it is for the, our our guys who are working or right. gals um, who are helping employees figure this out. Right. And yeah. putting all of those different pieces of the puzzle together so that way they can determine um, not if it's recommended to take it early, but what age is it recommended mm -hmm. to take it when? And I think that's right. the bigger question that we need to take that employees or retirees need to take a look at is what what is that break even point in my retirement that it makes sense for me? And if we knew, That's, if we knew when we were going to die, it would make this whole thing a lot easier. <laughs> right? Yes, that would make it, it so would. Much, maybe our spouse <laughs> already has a timeline for us. But <laughs> besides that, yeah, I know. Hmm, we're a little worried there. But besides that, you don't know. And so I was talking with... Um, uh, one of the, again, one of the advisors in our trusted network, uh, this week, and we we're doing a workshop together and, and I said, all right, you're going to do, you're going to do the chat. I'm going to, you know, do the presenting on the front end. You do the mm -hmm. chat in the background. We'll bring you in and be talking as well. But while I'm talking, you do the chat and he goes, so I'm answering questions. And I said, yeah. And most of them will be, it depends. 
because people are asking really specific questions like this that you don't know until you look at someone's situation, mm -hmm. someone's family life, someone's yeah. uh, goals, someone's financial health inside and outside the government, someone's what you're predisposed to, um, all these different things. And then you can make a good choice at that point, but not until then. So, right. okay, that's number one. Number two, we receive a lot of emails regarding, so we being, so this is the federal employee talking, right? We receive a lot of okay, emails so regarding- Okay, so somebody from HR then, right? We receive a lot of emails, let me, let, well, let me, let me see, I haven't read this in a okay. bit. So we receive a lot of emails regarding Fegley insurance costing a lot more than private insurance but as we age, I don't know of anyone who has done this. Is it really worth it? Um, this, I, so I saw this actually as a federal employee receiving, you know, just random emails that, hey, you should buy our insurance because Fegley is too expensive. That's kind of how I read yes. it. Yes. Yes. Now that I read it all in context, then I it takes me back to the time when I was helping federal employees. Um, with their planning. I had this one gentleman in particular, which we were looking at, um, you know, getting that outside private coverage um, outside of Fegley. And he had received an email around the same time that we were talking about um, a, a similar marketing email regarding targeting Fegley and the fact that it um, progressively gets older as you age and they were trying to ultimately to sell him into a private plan you mean and more, more expensive as you age right what did is I that say? what you meant uh, older as you age i'm like well yeah duh oh. i mean <laughs> yeah. yes more expensive <laughs> just kidding okay okay just just want to make sure <laughs> well yeah that's what happens cassie uh, yeah, oh, man. yeah okay sorry go ahead go ahead um, yeah that's what i get forgetting uh, not enough sleep, but okay. So yes, <laughs> Fegley insurance costs more. My point to that was, <clears throat> I was like, well, yeah, didn't you look at the report? I mean, I showed you in the report that costs. And so right. we were able to kind of branch out from there and, you know, have that deeper dive into that conversation because he was like, oh, well, you know, this is what I received. And I'm like, he's like, isn't that kind of the same thing that you're doing? And I was like, well, somewhat but they're specifically just looking at one benefit that you are getting. We're looking at the whole piece of the pie right. and kind of what that looks like, making sure that we're we're connecting all those dots and that we're coordinating that care together. And I think that's why, um, you know, I'm so passionate about this is because it really irks me when advisors are just after that one quick sale um, yeah. And that's one yep. thing I love about yep. our trusted advisors in our network is they are doing that full service planning. We're making sure of that. Um, they're not after that quick sale. And because you can't just look at your life insurance, right? right. Yes, Begley is your um, is going to cost more as you get older. It's what we call on the private part, uh, private side as a five year term policy, because as you get older every five years, that premium increases. And in fact, it almost doubles at 55 and age 60. And depending on the options that you have chosen or what coverage you've elected for Fegley, it can get really expensive. Right. Um, and a lot of times, if they have more coverage of Fegley insurance, by the time their premiums stop increasing at age 80, they've paid more into the policy, into the Fagley program, than they have the actual coverage that they have. That's right, um, yeah. Sometimes that happens sooner, sometimes that happens later. Again, it depends on somebody's income and, and all of those different factors to that specific person. But I really do feel like the earlier somebody can look into this and look into private insurance, because you're not gonna know your own numbers until you actually branch out. Right. And and one of the things that I say in I the workshop, what was that? I said, I know that was a lot, sorry. No, I, <laughs> it, it's it, you're spot on though, really, because one of the things that I say in the workshop is, 
is, is so some some people think okay there's the government's insurance which is fegly and then there's private life insurance but, but what they don't realize is that fegly is private life insurance and a government wrapper right and, and, and in fact so it's it's metlife just one plan of metlife where metlife has hundreds of solutions there's the government is only giving them one solution of metlife's where they could have hundreds and it's not any i don't want to say it's not any cheaper because it 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 might yeah. be but it, it a lot of times it's really not so but it may be the only thing that they can get so i'm not saying that it's good or bad right. we just have to be educated on what actually is fegly when do the prices go mm -hmm. up look at it like you said in in a holistic uh approach rather than just life insurance no well let's talk about life insurance and also long-term care and also TSP and also your pension and your yeah. social security in light of all of that and then make a decision. You can't just say, oh, I want some life insurance, go get it. I mean, you can, but it's not typically the best you idea. Can. It's not. In fact, I had another client who we were looking at replacing their Fagley coverage, but going through the underwriting process, we found out he was not insurable. So. Right. Thankfully, right. we didn't cancel anything. We didn't change anything right. with Fegley. And he had some really strong coverage with the options that he had chosen. So I said, hey, look, you need to keep this because you're already there. Um, they don't do a medical examination unless you, you know, try and, and um, convert it over to permanent coverage. I said, but right now, this is your best option, um, you know, because the just the way that that way we were looking at and the coverage he needed at the time and everything else it just wasn't going to be worth it for him sure um yep so you know sometimes uh those are just what what has to be right right, right. and that's why we always say if you are looking at private insurance too don't cancel your coverage yes please because you don't, don't. know what those different plans are going to entail and what those underwriters are going to say. And, you know, maybe one company isn't going to be the right one. Maybe you have to look at a couple of different companies, but in the meantime, you don't want to cancel your coverage or, or decrease your coverage. Right. And not when you don't have the option to increase it or get yep. more coverage later, because if you do that, you could ultimately, um, you know, not have that coverage in place when you need it most or when your spouse needs it most or whoever your beneficiary is um, because it, it, you know, you couldn't find coverage elsewhere. So you've, you've got to be careful with, um, with the Fegley insurance on if you are looking elsewhere, you know, keep what you have until you have that policy in place and you've paid for it and you've signed yep. on the dotted line. Yep. One quick story. I had so, someone who, who was doing, um, who said, okay, I'm going to go get coverage. Uh, out, I mean, private insurance, private life insurance. Mm -hmm. And she, so she came to our class, learned about it and said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go check it out. She checked it out and said, okay, this is best for me. I'm going to go do this. The day before she was going to go sign, she had a little bit of a heart attack, not a massive heart attack, but a little mm -hmm. heart attack. It precluded her from getting any more life insurance. And now the only thing she could have had was Fegley and she did not cancel it. Thankfully she kept it. Oh. And so she, she was still okay. She was going to have, she's going to be paying more, but she waited just one day too long. Had she gone, yeah. you know, the, even the day before she would have been fine. And that's why we say, go figure this out now. Do not wait. Every, I mean, I don't care if you're 20 years from retirement, figure this stuff out now. So, okay. No, if you're Sorry. listening to this podcast, yeah, go and, and look into this and get a hold of somebody. If you don't have a financial advisor or insurance professional that understands the federal benefit, please let us know. Sign up on our contact. We'll be able to get you in, uh, in touch with somebody in our trusted network who can help you get that information. Um, it's free too. No. Yeah, right. No sales pitch, exactly. no nothing. It's simply just getting you your numbers because you can't do any sort of planning or any sort of further action until you know where you stand right now with your benefits. Yes. And, you know, they understand too, and they've agreed to do two free consultations, getting you your, your numbers and, and making sure that you, 
you understand what you have federally before you can do any of the other retirement planning. So, um, you know, definitely worth it to look into. That's what I'm yep. going to say. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We do. We do hundreds of them every month. And so it, it, anyways, well, I'll just stop there. Okay. Next question. Next question. Are there any settings on TSP allocation? Now, yes, but depending on what, obviously this is a very vague question, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to just quickly talk about what are the settings and what kind of, what kind of things can they set in their TSP? You want to cover some of that? So there's a lot of things that they can do within their TSP. Um, and ultimately, the employee is in control of that, right. right? So initially, when somebody signs up, then the TSP does have a certain um, allocation and contribution that they've set up. But it depends on when you were hired. Right. That will depend on what they automatically put in place for you. If you haven't done any further, um, anything further with your TSP, right? So I can't tell you, I mean, the answer is yes, they have settings to automatically do allocations to the TSP, but what those settings are change every few years. And so I don't know what his setup for you. That's right. what I can say, but take ownership of your TSP, please. right? Take a hold of that. Um, look into it and, and, uh, you know, there are certain contributions that you, I feel that you should be doing, but again, I'm not a professional. I can't tell you what you, I, I can't recommend what to do to you, um, or, or, you know, in your TSP plan and, and 401k, uh, but the government matches 5% and free money is free money. So I would, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Try and Take do it. that if you can. Take it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Cassie, I um, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think that there are three different allocations that can be made, and, and we can call and and allocations is kind of a general word. Number the first one is yeah. how much money do you put in? How much are you allocating to the TSP? The second one is how much do you allocate to the five funds, the GFC, S, and I. And then the next one is how much do you allocate to Roth versus traditional? And I'll, I'm, I'm, it's odd because when I do the workshops, I get questions like, so, so wait, I, I can add to the Roth for my T, right? Is is it in there? Can I go ahead and do that? I'm like, yeah, it's, it's been there all along. Maybe you just haven't seen it, but it's it's there. It's right in front of you and you haven't yeah. seen it. So I think those are probably the three, you know, if we call it allocations that most people would be talking about. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you could actually elaborate a little bit more on that because I remember when the first um, workshop that I attended that you were hosting live, yeah. um, I had brought my husband to. Yep, and I remember. I love him. And he had taken some <laughs> advice, though, from his <laughs> uncle, who was a CSRS employee, uh -huh. and he was first. And his uncle told him, be in the G Fund. That's the safest thing. Right. And you weren't trying to guide anybody to anything. You were just simply giving them the information about the TSP. And he, we do this thing in the class, uh, in any class that we take together where we're, you know, make notes to each other. Yeah, and yeah. he was like, what? Question mark. What do you mean that the, the you know, CNS fund were like, the highest, you know, over the G fund for earnings, like, I don't know how many years, like, yeah, they had some really bad years. Um, but for the most part, like he was just like, mind blown. Like I need to do something different because I'm yeah. younger. I have more years in, the, in service, yes. like all of this different stuff. And so finally he let me take it over for him. <laughs> we're, earning, we're earning some money. And so Smart I'm really excited man. about that. But, um, <laughs> It was just like he didn't understand what it was about the TSP and therefore he just went for the safe bet. He took that yep. water cooler talk and he just ran with yep. it, right? Yep. He didn't 
he didn't, it wasn't until he was actually informed that he could make better decisions for himself. Right. Which and is, I think that's what people need to do. Yeah. Which is why we do this. So mm -hmm. you, everyone can be informed and do it. Okay. I hate to say it, but we're out of time. Oh, out and of so time. that's all right. Five, four, three, two, one. Thanks, Cassie. Talk to everyone next time. <laughs> Hope you gained a lot. Thanks, See you next time. All right. Well, we're getting there, right? Maybe. Right. To get Cassie's comprehensive report on your federal retirement benefits at no cost, no obligation, and no sales pitch, go to fednababble.com. While you're there, submit a question for them to answer on the show.